Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has reiterated that he will not accept any truce deal that endangers Israel's security. And this comes as Israel and Hamas have reportedly agreed on an interim governance plan for Gaza in the second phase of a potential hostage deal. I am committed to the plan to free our hostages, but the Hamas assassins continue to adhere to the demands that contradict the plan and endanger Israel's security. As Prime Minister of Israel and out of a sense of national responsibility, I am not prepared to accept these demands. That is why I am sticking firmly to four principles necessary for Israel's security, which are fulfilled in the outline. This comes amid mounting Hamas warnings that Israeli offensive in the Gaza Strip will hinder true stocks. The militant group has warned Israel against the growing displacements and attacks in the Palestinian territories. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Netanyahu reaffirmed his commitment to bring back hostages still held in Gaza. He said, and I'm going to quote him here, we have a moral obligation to return them to all to Israel, the living and the dead alike. While being interrupted by hecklers during his speech at an Israeli military graduation, the leader said that the war against Hamas will quote-unquote continue until victory. During the ceremony, Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant pointed out towards the requirement of a state probe agency to keep leaders, including the Prime Minister, in check. He added that this will help confirm effective decision-making processes. <laughs> The investigation committee needs to be objective. It needs to check all of us, the decision makers and the executors, the government, the army and the security bodies. In this government and the governments in the last decade, which led to the events of October 7th. After Thursday's talks between Tel Aviv and Cairo over the possibility of a ceasefire deal, Prime Minister Netanyahu demanded retention of control over Gaza territories along Egypt's border. He said that the control will deter weapons from reaching Hamas from Egypt's corridor. He did not confirm whether or not the measure will be permanent. We will not allow weapons to be smuggled to Hamas from Egypt, primarily through Israeli control of the Philadelphia Axis and the Rafah crossing. The Israeli army also admitted of admitted its failure in defending against the October 7th Hamas attack, especially in the worst hit city, Kibbutz Biri. This comes as reports reveal that Israel had full knowledge of the attack, a claim mirrored by the U.S. The U.S. claims to have prompted Israel about a possible terror attack. In fact, Israeli Israeli intelligence gathered reports of the attack, including the locations, breach points, and the kidnapping of hostages. The idea failed in its mission to protect the residents of Kibbutz Beri. It is painful and difficult for me to say this. The IDF was supposed to protect the residents, but unfortunately, we were not there for long hours of fighting. For hours, the residents of Beri defended their families with their bodies while they were alone against the terrorists. Also on Thursday, the Canadian ambassador to Egypt visited the Rafah border crossing, batting for the two-state solution. Ambassador Louis Dumas said that Canada is quote-unquote committed to help Gaza. They've done an extraordinary job in assisting the, the people of Gaza and sending aid to Gaza. I mean, Canada is committed to peace in the region. Canada is committed to a two-state solution. Canada is hoping that will be a ceasefire. And we hope that it's done as quickly as possible. On the other hand, the United States, it will soon suspend all aid operations for, from its Gaza pier over challenging weather conditions and the shortage in distribution assistance. This comes as President Joe Biden laid forth the challenges in securing a two-state deal at a White House press conference. Biden said that he supports Israel's cause while calling the current Israeli war cabinet an extremely conservative one, indicating the difficulties in negotiations. Third, for months, the United States has been working to secure a ceasefire in Gaza, to bring the hostages home, create a path for peace and stability in the Middle East. Six weeks ago, I laid out a detailed plan in writing. It was endorsed by the UN Security Council, the G7. That framework is now agreed on by both Israel and Hamas. So I sent my team to the region to hammer out the details. 
These are difficult, complex issues. There's still gaps to close. We're making progress. The trend is positive. And I'm determined to get this deal done and bring an end to this war, which should end now.